Hey everyone, and welcome to Vodcast 7.1, Introduction to Natural Selection. This is the first Vodcast in our Unit 7, uh, Natural Selection Evolution Unit. So let's start right off with our learning objectives. Today we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about what is natural selection. We're going to talk a little bit about what factors influence natural selection, and we're also going to talk a little bit about how does natural selection affect populations. Okay? So, um, you know, evolution, natural selection, right? Uh, people generally think of it as, you know, fish learning to walk and things like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about kind of what it really is. We're going to start with some definitions. First definition we're going to talk about is evolution. Evolution is the change in the genetic makeup of a population over time. So the key there is the genetic makeup. We're going to be talking about genotypes and phenotypes. So we're going to get back into some of our genetics that we did in units five and six. Okay, now the other things about evolution, it's really important to know that evolution, uh, because it is such a controversial topic and many people either don't believe in it or try to sort of downplay it, it's important to understand that it is indeed supported by multiple lines of evidence, right? We have a lot of evidence in a lot of different ways in different places to support the idea of evolution. The other thing you will hear people argue is that evolution is just a theory. So it's really important to take a minute and discuss the idea of what a scientific theory is and what a scientific law is, because people will say, well, it's just a theory, it's not an actual law or anything like that. So let's talk about that real quick. Okay, a theory versus a law in terms of science. So in science, a theory is an explanation of why a phenomenon occurs. In this case, the phenomenon we're seeing is this change in population over time. Okay, that's the phenomenon. The explanation is what we describe evolution to be, um, or another, another way of looking at that would be that the phenomenon is the emergence of new species, the change in, spe uh, in different species over time, and then the explanation is how that happens. And so natural selection is what we're going to end up talking a lot about. How is this idea of a theory different from a scientific law? So a scientific law is a description of an observed phenomenon. In other words, a, it tells us what we expect to happen, but it doesn't tell us why we expect that to happen. So law of gravity, for example. Law of gravity tells us that based on all of our observations, things will fall at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared here on Earth. What it doesn't tell us is why that's happening, why it's that specific rate, right? So that's a scientific law, whereas a theory is the explanation. And the other piece, would, again, is that a theory is backed up by multiple lines of evidence. Okay, so the process that actually sort of causes evolution is this idea of natural selection, right? This is our driving uh, factor in evolution. And this is just a process by which organisms having adaptations suited for a particular environment, have a greater chance of survival and reproduction, thereby passing the adaptations to subsequent generations. Kind of a long, wordy description. But basically what it means is um, orga some organisms can survive better in a particular environment, therefore they're more likely to reproduce, and because they're more likely to reproduce, they're more likely to pass those traits or adaptations on to the next generation. Okay. So last piece here is adaptation, and adaptation is just any trait that provides an advantage in a particular environment. Okay, so basically an adaptation is a specific genotype leading to a specific phenotype that in turn um, gives that particular individual an advantage in a particular environment. So Charles Darwin is the one that's always credited with developing the uh, theory of evolution by natural selection. And he did this aboard, or he gathered his evidence aboard the HMS Beagle. So he spent the uh, part of the 1830s as a young man traveling on the HMS Beagle, circumnavigating the globe, and collecting evidence as a naturalist, making observations about the world around him. And that led him to develop this idea of natural selection as a driving force for the change in species over time. So he, based on his evidence, he developed three sort of postulates or three 
conditions that have to be in place for natural selection to occur. Number one, most characteristics are heritable, passed on from parent to offspring. So this is the genetic component, the idea that the characteristics that we can see that may be better suited to an environment are heritable. Number two, more offspring are produced than can survive. So there's competition for resources. This is a really big key component of natural selection, is that there has to be competition. And then the third one, characteristics of offspring vary, and these variations are heritable. So this idea of variation within a population is also a big key component when it comes to natural selection. Okay. Um, and then finally, this idea of adaptation, um, again, leading back to the idea of these characteristics have variation, and sometimes that variation is helpful or better suited to a particular environment, and therefore we call that an adaptation. So one of the big, most common, not commonly known ways that he, that Darwin developed the, his ideas was by looking at finches on the Galapagos Islands. So what Darwin realized with these finches is that they were all very, very similar, but they had very different beaks and that they f appeared to feed on different foods. And so he developed this theory that there were, that there was an ancestral species and then variation in beak size caused to change over time into multiple species based on the food source that they were eating. Okay, last little bit here. Um, it should be noted that gentleman Alfred Wallace sort of independently developed a theory of evolution and natural selection. Um, and he and Darwin together in 1858 presented before the Linnaean Society, which was sort of the big scientific society of the day, um, their ideas. However, Darwin had a larger body of evidence and also as a older, more established naturalist had sort of the backing of the scientific community. So he's the one that generally gets the credit for it. Last piece, some of the evidence we have for evolution includes things like divergent evolution versus convergent evolution. And we're gonna talk a little bit about those as we get going. The fossil record provides us some really good evidence. This idea of homologous structures, and we'll talk about what that is as we get moving. Same thing with vestigial structures. Biogeography, talking about where different species are located and the similarities in those areas. And then molecular biology or some basic genetics. These are all different pieces of evidence that we have that help us to uh, support the theory of evolution. Okay, all right, that's it. Be ready to go through a few questions and discuss this in more detail in class, and I will see you then.